Iron County Commission approves a new sales tax to help fund a new jail. A massive showing at the Hurricane Valley Rotary Club Easter Car Show, and what else you can look for in the sky during the upcoming solar eclipse. You're watching St. George News at 5. Good afternoon, I'm Amy Bennett. Last Monday, the Iron County Commission unanimously approved a 0.3% sales tax increase in order to help pay for a new jail. The tax aims to generate around $4.2 million in revenue each year for the project. The old Iron County Correctional Facility was built back in 1987, and over the past few years, officials have been looking at ways to replace the out-of-date jail. Commissioner Mike Bleak stated that he believes that the tax increase, which is set to go in effect on July 1st, will fully fund this new facility. St. George Park Director Shane Moore is warning Southern Utah residents that Northern Utah landscapers are driving down to make a quick buck. Here's Maury Kessler on what to do if they come to your door offering to trim your trees. Each year between January and April, some landscaping companies from northern Utah come to Washington County looking to drum up work and go door-to-door -door offering tree care services in what one St. George official considers a predatory manner. Shane Moore, the Director of Parks and Community Services for the City of St. George, recently told St. George News that tree care offered by these suspect companies does more harm to the trees than anything else due to a practice called tree topping. So when we have these companies come down from northern Utah, and that's, that's what we see this time of year, is we see landscapers come down to try to drum up work. And they're really predatory, where they'll go house to house, they'll look at a tall, beautiful tree and say, hey, just to let you know, we think your tree's dangerous. And then they'll go up and top the tree and make these improper cuts. And so what happens is they come down, they convince people that they need to top their tree, they improperly prune the tree, and then the, the homeowner's left with a tree now that's been severely damaged and, and sometimes never recovers. Tree topping used to be a widely used practice until it began to be discouraged by arborists over the last 40 years as the science around trees has advanced. If someone shows up at your door offering tree care services, Moore says the first thing to ask is if they have a certified arborist on staff, and if they do, the company will likely be a reputable one. If not, the best thing you can do is refuse the service so your trees are not harmed. Thanks, Maury. The Hurricane Valley Rotary Club Easter Car Show took place over this weekend and had nearly 300 registered vehicles for car enthusiasts to admire. Haven Scott has more on the event and some of the fascinating automobiles on display. The 2024 Hurricane Valley Rotary Club Easter Car Show saw large crowds and congested streets despite the overcast skies. 290 cars registered this year for Southern Utah's largest car show. Becky Sylvester drove 1,600 miles from the East Coast to display her altered car, one she inherited from her father. Yeah, my dad drove it first. He taught me everything from tuning to building and driving, and I took over everything. It's fun for the kids that are normal daily lives. Hey, it's something exciting, you know, for them to sit in the cockpit and take pictures, tell his, their other friends, hey, I did this. <laughs> when asked about the most important aspect of drag racing, Sylvester said not to give up. Girls can do it too. Not just boys. It's a man's world. But hey, girls can do it too. Bands of all makes and models were not disappointed as many different styles of cars, recreation vehicles, and even modern variations were on display. Proceeds from this year's car show will be used for a town veterans memorial park, said Mayor Nanette Billings. For all the six branches of the military, we'll have Army, Navy, Air Force, Marine, Coast Guard, Space at this memorial. Residents have already raised nearly half of the estimated $600,000 needed for the military tribute. Thanks, Haven. And now I'm going to send it over to Aaron Crane to give us a breakdown of what happened this past week in sports. Aaron? Thanks, Amy. And Region 9 baseball is a week full of sweeps. Snow Canyon played Pineview, and the Warriors won the first game 6-3 and dominated the second game, winning 10-0. Junior Andrew Lyon threw a complete game, only allowing two hits on the night before the Warriors ended the game on a run rule in the sixth inning. Desert Hills got the best of Hurricane in their two games, beating them 12-5 in the first game. In Game 2, the Tigers held the Thunder to just one hit, however, they still end up losing the game just 1-0. And last, Crimson Cliffs beat Cedar 12-0 and then 7-2. The Mustangs were led by the long ball in Game 1 as Kyler Skinner, Trey Evans, and Parker Andrus all ended the night with bombs. And in Region 9 boys soccer, Crimson Cliffs went on the road against Dixie. The Mustangs got out to an early 2-0 lead, then the Flyers tied it up 2-2, but the Stangs controlled the second half scoring two more goals and ended the game with a 4-2 victory. Desert Hills beat Hurricane 9-3. 
Thunder senior Dylan Bingham pulled off a hat trick in the match and also assisted on three other goals as well. Cedar beat Pineview 3-1. The game was tied going into the second half before the Reds sealed the deal with two more goals, giving them their first win of the season. Now back to you, Amy. Thanks, Aaron. Among all the sports and car shows in Southern Utah, the St. George Art Festival also kicked off this past weekend, transforming Town Square into a vibrant celebration of creativity and art. The event featured over 160 artists from around the world and 40 different food vendors all serving up something unique to munch on while walking from booth to booth. The National Parks Band also performed live at the event to cap off the 45th year of the St. George Art Festival. The next solar eclipse is quickly approaching, but there may be something else to look for in the sky that very same day. A rare comet that has been unseen from Earth in over 70 years will be visible on the same day as the solar eclipse. Dubbed the Devil Comet for its peculiar features, this Mount Everest-sized comet will pass by Earth on the same day as the solar eclipse on April 8th. The brightness and visibility still remain unpredictable, but this will be your best chance to get a glimpse of the Devil Comet before it's gone for another 71 years. Thank you for watching St. George News at 5. I'm Amy Bennett with St. George News, your number one source for local news. This has been St. George News at 5.